You're listening to Oilers Nation Radio, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. One hour of straight hockey talk with Dan, Rick, Tyler, and Bag Milk starts now. Oilers Nation Radio, episode 695,212. Episode 247. Bag Milk here. Liam, Tyler, Rick, Dan. Gang's all here. Got plenty to talk about today. We should insert Liam into that intro, huh? Who's Liam? Am I I even on the show? And you don't get tagged on. You were on the camera last week. You were sitting right here. Buried behind the camera. Yeah, you're with me back here. You had your nice smile (sighs) out on the camera last week. Yeah, I took a really nice photo of you. I did. Honestly, it was good. Like, I know it's a little bit late now, but you should use that photo for Christmas cards next year. Mm -hmm. You can still send out Christmas cards with that photo on there. I, I just know feel like they would get back to England quick time. enough. Yeah, you want them on the fridge for a little bit. You yeah, could yeah. fax them. It's true. I could. No, you option. could just you could just label them as twenty twenty three Christmas cards. And yeah, send them right now. you just got a head start on it. Then you get like a full twelve months on their fridge. Yeah, I bought like, it. Good Revolutionary argument. I might just print off that photo and put it on my fridge just because. Yeah, have it, folks. We could we could probably find somewhere back here. We could put it too. Yeah, it's the grass. So yeah, Tyler, I could pose like that if you want me to. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be nice. Has anybody really told nice. you not to pose like that? Multiple people. Oh, yeah. I don't believe societal that. standards. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. Multiple yeah. people because I'm English. Yeah, it's probably. I'd like to objectify Liam in the studio a little bit more, staring at his sans clothed body. You're probably on the big screen. Yeah, I'd like that. Tyler, nice we have options here. Liam. Are you happy about the way this started? Because you brought that up. Yeah, I am. I always feel like our podcast, it's, it's nice for us to set the tone with just like two minutes of nonsense and then get into the hockey talk. As he was yawning. <laughs> I'm just a sleepy guy. Yes, you are. It's been a long day. It's only not even two o'clock yet. Mm, don't remind me. I've done a lot of life. <laughs> done a lot of living today. Ate a lot of chocolate covered strawberries out in the hallway. Yeah. I ate a lot of pineapple. A lot of chocolate recently. I got a little Christmas bowl out on the, little, on the table now. Hold on. You didn't ask us if we want to hear the story. You always ask us if we want to hear the story. I would like but to this, it. hold on a second. Yeah, I'm going to step in it. And this might explain the why you feel like don't. large t-shirts don't fit you anymore. Like these this large is, t-shirts don't, don't fit me. I need to size um, up. For so this. before we started recording, uh, Liam asked Rick about nation gear tees. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're all stocking up on nation gear. Yep. Christmas is coming. It Liam is. needs some fresh tees. Yeah. Wasn't sure what size to go with. Nationgear.ca if you it's want like, to join. Are those them. Nation Gear tees? Like, yeah, those are Nation Gear. Okay, I'll need a size up. Yeah. And now it's starting to make sense because you got a bowl, bowl of chocolate out and you're just mounting all day. And I brought it up earlier too. The cheeseburger review started at the beginning of the hockey season. Right? That is true. I have had this issue with Nation Gear t-shirts since the summer, the playoff run. <laughs> I had a Neon Leon t-shirt that was a large. It didn't fit. Did you shrink it? No, I didn't even fucking take it out of the pack and I knew it didn't fit me. I oh, did. Well. I took it out. And then it <laughs> to be fair, though, to be fair, I also put on a couple of LBs in the playoff run. I think we all did. Well, you'd think bananas would slim me down a little bit. No, a lot bananas of sugar are waking. I'm not convinced. <laughs> a lot of potassium. Show me a study. A lot of sugars. Yeah. <laughs> Where are the stats on this? Mm-hmm. Pretty sure it's just the nation gear shrinking. Moral of the story, I got three sweaters. I got any t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Nationgear.ca. Grab yourself something. Look fresh. Fix up. Look sharp. Maybe you too can appear on my fridge with a nice smile like Liam has. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> For our friends at DoorDash Noodle Noodle, we're going to start off with the delicious debate as we do every single Friday. Again, location number 18 for Oodle Noodle opened up in Calgary. Uh, just last week, Jay was down there opening up the store. By all accounts, the people of Calgary are thrilled to have something other than total garbage to eat. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they don't even have burgers of their own rink, so I'm not surprised. See? Makes sense. Salad on burgers are pretty good. Especially for uh, free. Well, if you like mayo, Why? we discovered that on the last There's a lot trip, of mayo. the free burger that they give and to then, the FDA And also, people? if you did the burger with the cheese, which was just nacho sauce, it was a wet mess, but it was good. Like, I gave mine a little shake. Right onto the floor. To right onto the back of a Flames fan. Yet it also, uh, you know, improved the atmosphere somehow. Shout out to the Saddle Dome. For our friends at Oodle Noodle and DoorDash, Mr. Uramchuk, what do you have for a delicious debate for us today? What's the most you would give up for Joel Edmondson? He's been in the rumor mill recently. Arpin Basu was like, oh, it'll take Borgo and some picks to get it done. And Spectre said, if it costs Borgo, you do it because the window's the window, whatever that means. They're both idiots. Okay, Rick, you can go first. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm moving anything off the roster. If it was a roster player, the only roster player I would move for that in that uh, move would be Barry 
but there'd have to be more to the trade. Uh, I can't see a forward being the one to go. I guess there's a couple of guys in this, in the fourth line, that'd be fine, but there's nothing of any substance. <laughs> Dan, what do you think? I respect that Arpen Basu and uh, who was the other person? Sorry, Mark Spector are connected. Uh, but respectfully, I'm with you, Rick. I thought that the price tag that Arpen put on Joel Edmondson was outrageous. Um, silly. Idiotic. Like I could also say that Jesse Pujarvi's value is Nathan McKinnon, but I don't think that's what's going to actually happen. So I don't know. I just don't get it. I, I, I don't understand even entertaining paying that high of a value for a guy in Edmondson who, you know, like we see it with Brett Kulak, everybody's saying that he's the new Brett Kulak. Well, we're not exactly over the moon with what would Brett Kulak's bring to this team so far. I don't well, know. I, why am, I love what Kulak. What did Kulak bring? bring? What did Kulak cost us? Two seconds. That's, well, we and two that seconds would be really like, not a Borgo. That would be the not other Borgo counterpoint plus? to that that I was going to say is that, yeah, the cost of, of Kulak was nothing compared to apparently what Joel Edmondson's going to cost us. So no, I would trade Nima line and a couple of picks for Edmondson. You say you would do the Kulak deal. That's I would where do the Kulak exactly deal. They also retained money. Mm-hmm. What's and Edmondson's now, contract? Edmondson well, currently three point five for two this year next yep. year. Yeah, three point five on the cap. Right hand shot. Yeah. Left hand shot. Lefty. Lefty. He is six foot five, two hundred twenty one pounds. He is a big dude in sixteen That's... games played. He's got one goal, two assists, uh, twenty one pims, a minus six. If you're into that one, twenty one stop, pims. Stop yep. with the left handed defense from a major. Why? Why? Because I think we need the right-hand defenseman more. If you can get that same player, but a right-hand shot and swap him for Barry, I think you're in a much better spot. But I don't think they're going to move Barry. But you're not going to move Broberg unless it's somebody a hell of a lot better than Edmondson, right? So the only time you're going to move a guy like Broberg is something like the Chikrin deal, and I don't think that's happening. Uh, You've already got Kulak and Nurse there, so that left side is already taken care of. You've got CC and, and Bush on the, on the, on the right side. And if you were to bring another guy who could play some CC esque numbers, then you can give uh Bouchard a little more coverage in terms of who, or where he's starting his zones and who he's playing against. And you're in a much better situation. I agree with that in the sense of it would balance your pairings more. Right. But I don't think that's the way Ken Holland views it. I think he wants to keep Barry around because he's good in the room and a part of this team's core. Fair, but are you, are you, I guess, so Holland drafted um, Broberg, right? Yeah, so I don't yeah. think Holland's going to be willing to push Broberg out of the top six right now. I think he will. I don't think he should yet anyways. I think he needs more, more time to figure out whether he's good for the playoffs or not. Um, but yeah, no, you need a right, you need... I like what Tyson Berry brings to this team, especially off the ice. That player just on the ice is not what they need. They need someone who can do defensively what he can do offensively. He's unnecessary calories in a way. They need yeah, Jason Smith is what you're saying. <laughs> 2023 of Jason Smith. Cause otherwise he'll spend a lot of time in the uh, suspension room. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He was a little rough. I agree with you, but that's, almost in a way part of the reason I wouldn't go after Edmondson either. Cause I feel like Fair. Open- I'm not going after any of the big names mm-hmm. because they cost too much. You need to go find someone they're not talking about to get them. Who's your guy again? Price. Tyler? Like Kulak last year. What's I like Gavrikov in Columbus, but he's Frank thinks he's going to go for a first. See, I don't, I pay a first for a guy at the deadline. Sure. Yeah. Now, are you going to keep him? I said, I like he's keepable too, right? He's keepable. But I think night one next year, the left side of your blue line is already set with nurse Kulak and Broberg. Yeah. So getting Edmondson, who has term, doesn't make sense because he's a lefty and he's going to block Broberg next year. You don't want that. No. Getting a righty right now doesn't make sense because you have Barry. If, unless Barry's in maybe the swap. This, it, maybe this summer it makes sense to swap Barry for Edmondson. Maybe that's a deal that makes sense. Then Broberg's on his offside and he plays as a righty or whatever. I just think right now you need to shut down lefty because they're not going to move Barry. I think expecting them to trade Barry in season, I, th- I think it's foolish because I, I think you're going to be holding your breath for no reason. I just think there's a there's better odds that Holland moves on from Barry right now than he does to bring in another defenseman that's going to be ahead of Broberg in the in the top six. I think Holland is the kind of GM who recognizes the value of having vets. I think that's the fair. lost too much leadership in the summer to lose Barry again. Well, and that's what I that's, so I think not, that's the only argument to keep Barry. To I agree. Honest. I agree with you. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There. So I mean, in terms of a guy, if you're going to swap him out, he does have to bring those intangibles that Barry brings, or you need to bring in another guy um, with those intangibles. Yeah. 
What about the other rumor that's going on or well, that came up this week of the Pooley RV for Carlson at 50% retained. I'm in. No, the I saw the, the thing. Oh, I don't remember who wrote it. They said the Oilers would say no. And I, oh, Frank, Frank said that Frank said so, no, on actually, my show. Yeah. So I had a question for that. Was it the Oilers don't want to move Pooley RV or the Oilers don't want Carlson at half price. They want him at less than half price. The Oilers don't want the baggage of four more years of Carlson. That's even yeah. at like four million dollars. Five would be five point seven five. Yeah, that but it has to be everybody's sorry. consideration when they're looking at acquiring an Eric Carlson. At yeah, this how point. old a guy is he now? Thirty two. You're looking at bringing still, in a guy. He's not old. Yeah, but he's that's a guy old. that went to San Jose and did what? Fell apart for two years. That's exactly it. What did the rest of the team do? But fell apart. Okay, but he was the guy that was brought in to kind of right that ship and steer it forward. And now he's having one good season and we're like, Oh, we're going to give up the ship for him, but they're not giving up the ship for him. They're bringing in half price of him. Gregor's five four more years though. Rick Gregor's counterpoint was if Eric Carlson was a UFA at the end of this season and the Oilers signed him to a four year deal at 5.75 mil per, would you bat an eye? Would you be like, Damn, that's a good deal to get Carlson. And then roll Boosh, CC, and Carlson. <laughs> I would still bat an eye. I I, I, okay. so and that, that's fair honestly. too because he's he's banged up and he's not great defensively. So yeah, and I think that you kind of want Bouchard in the in the minutes that he's going to play. So I still think you need a, a guy who has that defensive upside that some of these guys have their ups, offensive upside. I agree. Carlson would, however, increase our pirate per sixty. What are you that hair? Incredible. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude. Weird. I mean, just. Can you imagine the Oilers go to three on three OT and it's no. Carlson, McDavid, and Drysdale? It's terrifying. Be crippling. However, yeah. no three on three OT in the playoffs, and this team needs to be better built for a playoff run. He was great in that playoff run, though, that he went on. Oh fuck! Remember that would saucer he be, pass he, he made to Mike Hoffman yeah, one year? He was nutty. Could he be on the All Abs team? Do I was we just know? thinking that too. You know like, what? That's something to consider. We need so to know. Because, uh, let's face it. Life is officially off that squad at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need to replace. Squad. Holloway. Broberg. Broberg has got Holloway. the all abs team. Like he's a staple there for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was our Swedes. It was all yes, of our so. Swedes. Yeah. Larson went away. Yeah, Swedish all abs. Team. Yes, he doesn't have an ounce of fat on him. I bet. He's show he has abs. I bet you he doesn't, buddy. <laughs> 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 you don't have Kylie outside to yell at you for talking about too much Devin Shore. I, d- I agree though that I think that if the others are going to trade for a defenseman, it's got to be a guy who keeps the puck out of the net. And like, that's what they do. You need but to I'm break also up the cycle, man. That break up the cycle for sure. Frustrating because they just ran us around in circles. <laughs> There's that, but they also can't have a guy who that's all they do and can't make a pass. And that's my concern with Edmondson is great at breaking up the cycle. Not good with the puck on a stick. And you need someone who is, and maybe I'm being too picky, but you need someone who's just, just a hair more well-rounded. That's fair. That's, and that's, and that's actually an, an obvious point because our first passes have been terrible most of the year. Yep. And that's why so many people balked at that price, I think, from Apron and from um, Arpen. Mark. <laughs> Arpen, sorry, Arpen and, Arpen and Mark Spector is just like, it's just, that's just too much to pay for a guy that isn't checking all the boxes or the majority of the boxes that you need. And I think that's a great point because Liam, you mentioned like, oh, yeah, I would give up a first round pick for someone at the deadline. So would I. They need to be damn close to a perfect fit. Like Jonathan Taves, right? If you got Taves and a, yeah, a I'm middle, not giving up a first for Taves. You're not giving up a first for Taves. I don't oh. think so. This no. is Jonathan Taves from 2013. I, I have been turned a bit more onto Tyler's side of things. Giving up. He's having a hell of a year, Taves. man. I, I like, I'm open to Taves, but I don't know that I'm open to trading them a first for him. I, I think it depends on the, I, got him. I think it's trending that way. Maybe it's not quite fully there, but it's trending that way. Cause he's having a great year. He is. But again, Depends on the market for centerman. Jonathan Taves hasn't been Jonathan Taves in a minute. We don't need it to be that Jonathan Taves. We just need to be third line. Jonathan I want him to Taves. be as close to the original as possible for giving up a first. That's fair. And that's a fair take. But if you don't want to pay too much, you can go to Jasper. Jasper.travel. You can see some of the current deals they've got up there, including the Marmot Escape card. 50% off regular price adult, senior, student, and youth lift tickets every single day, all season, no blackout dates, and up to 50% off lift tickets at partner ski areas and up to 30% off on accommodations in Jasper. Go check out some of the deals at Jasper.travel. Our friends at Tourism Jasper are putting it all together. I'm very excited about going to Jasper ASAP, including the Pond Hockey Tournament that is hopefully getting locked in for the end of January. And there's a end wee rumor that a certain NHL insider may be there. Oof. Ooh. Is it Elliot Friedman? Probably. I am in no p- p- position. Chris to Johnson. Scott. <laughs> John Scott. James Duffy. 
I don't think he'd be an insider. Is it Tyler Yamchuk? Gregor. Yeah. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> I'm the insider now. James Duffy is enjoying the World Cup right now. So he's I have a oh, question. Oh, he's at home already. Is he? Yeah, he's ready to do the World Juniors now. Huh. But he's, um, a, he's a fun, he's a good time to be. I've, uh, you've told me stories. Yeah. Liam? So we obviously need a defenseman. Yes, we do. Any other names? Like I Brad, feel like you're Brad saying Brad this because you have one. Yeah. Well, I'm just lo- I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at the list of guys, and I wish I could put a screen on the wall so I knew what he's looking at. Yeah. Just this random website that has lists of he people. He just googled NHL defense contracts and stuff. So <laughs> here's the, like some free agents for this Hit upcoming us. season who I think could be available. Nick Jensen. Frank has mentioned him. He'd be an interesting target. Okay. Feel free to chime in yep. at any point. <laughs> Ollie Matter. I know that's been mentioned a few times, but I feel like Detroit's kind of trying to push a little bit. A lefty right? too. They right? won't sell. Yep. Rick, they're getting a lefty. Deal with it. Nope. Not dealing with it. Eric Gustafson, also in Washington. Former uh, Oiler draft, draft pick. pick. Yep. Bring him Not back. Not good enough defensively. Yeah. Ian Cole, no. Klingberg. Like that one's fun, but I just don't see how it works. <laughs> yeah, That's Rick's option. Okay. It's well, I got a different one. Bring it in back. Dmitry Kulikov. I don't hate that idea. I don't I hate that idea sides. either. What's it, take, what's it take to get Adam out of uh, Seattle? You can't do that to the guy, can you? No. I'm not doing it to them. We'd have to ask him first. Would yeah, you you'd have to back? ask him first. Would you like to come back now, Adam? Kulikov does have a no movement clause somehow. Modified, I guess. Maybe it's the January thing too. Like, yeah, maybe. Right? So he's 2.25. Luke Shem was brought up a bunch in our chat today. I don't know if he's good enough anymore outside of hitting guys and being physical. Kulikov and Shen would both be equal. Like you yeah. miss, you miss on everything and you're kind of standing there 10 minutes before the deadline with your pants around your ankles being like, fuck, I'll just give up a third for Luke Shen. Done. Yeah. Why'd you take Isn't your pants off Tampa 10 did? minutes ago? Because you were panicking about not being able to get a D-man. I just haven't been wearing <laughs> pants all day. That's fair. It's deadline day. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Shen is a, it's a last resort I wouldn't so mind. So it is an interesting one. And I think it's interesting because one, where the team is, and two, the cap issues are kind of running into right now. Gudas. Radko Gudas. Yep. He, brings he and basically. Darnell can reacquaint themselves. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> what well, it, makes you think Florida moves him? Because don't they need to move out money to get guys off the LTIR? Not, the crazy thing that happened was Patrick Hornquist, Hornquist hurt his head the day that Duclair <laughs> yeah. was coming back from the IR. <laughs> their, so, their GM crazy. walked up to him in the room. Bill Zito walked up to him and just <laughs> hit him on that with a frying pan. Like in the cartoons. <laughs> it's boom. just incredible how good things happen to good organizations. Uh, I Honestly, think they've been move, putting sorry. guys on IR like yeah. last week or so too here. So it's uh, you're juggling as you go. They will get to a point where they're going to do something. Yeah, but they will probably Liam need more than two and a half million, which is what Gudis makes. And they'll probably subtract it from their forward group. Okay. There's really not a lot. No, that's, that's why. Kind of it. And that's like, probably why Montreal thinks they're going to get a first for Edmondson. Like other guys Someone's going to pay that. Someone will pay Won't that. Won't be yeah. us. So I guess other guys that I mentioned, Kevin Shankirk, probably not a good fit. No. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Hey. Travis Hamannick, no. Jared Tenorti, no. no. Nick Holden? He is in the group with Shen and them. Like he... 1.3, by the way. He's better than Murray, but... yeah. And then I don't see that other guy on here. Is he, is he in RFA? Who? The, the Gavrikov? The, yeah. No, he's a pending UFA. I think you need to look at a guy who's got a year or two left on his contract because if you do move a guy like Barry out, this dude's going to have to hang out for a year or two on the right side before you wait for uh, DeHarnay to be ready. You know what I really want the others to do is why can't we get one of those Devin trades, Devin Taves trades done? Remember when Colorado acquired him for like beans? Two seconds, yeah. Like, that's what I want. So we want another Pat Maroon. Yeah. That trade was one. a great trade. Slim Shady. Well, no, like, we got another Maroon great and trade. they ate half his contract. He's out here popping 27 goals for us while Anaheim's paying him half his fucking co- salary. That was a good time. Yeah. Shout out to Martin Gurnad for going the other way. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Do, you do you guys believe that Ken Holland can get it done to, yes. like, get guys? I truly do. Yes. Like, when does I he do. really mess up on a trade? Yeah, like, I don't think he Anthony really has. CU was kind of just a shitty situation. I think yeah. I don't think that's fair. To- I still think he gave up too much in the Keith deal. I'll never the stray from that. Say? The Keith deal. 
I think what he if, showed it. Science. What if he, what if he got that money? What if they actually fulfilled the actual contract and we got the money back? Yeah. If the rules in the NHL actually mattered. Yeah. But there, the talk was that the Oilers knew from the get go that that wasn't going to be the case. So, so you think that I, st- I don't still don't get that. How it's, it's in a contract. It's all signed by everybody. Like, no, this part here, we're just going to get rid of this now. <gasps> oh my God. Holy moly. <laughs> Netherlands just scored in the 100th minute to That's send the game to extra time. Against Argentina, they were down 2 0 in the 75th minute. Now it's 2 2. That's the, the team I minute? picked at the start yeah. of this thing. I thought maybe a bear oh. had just walked into the office. <laughs> yeah, I thought somebody was attacking was. the rest of that. What kind of injury time, time do they have? They had 10, they had 10 minutes 10 of injury, minutes time? injury time. They have a folks. Just give them another fucking half. Why not? What was the most amount of injury time given out in this World Cup so far? 14. England. Wow. 14? Yeah. Go wow. I love that. Injury. Oh. Anyway, do you, so you guys believe that Ken, <laughs> Ken Holland can, can get the job done at the I'm day. not really yeah. too worried about him making a deal. Yeah. I don't think, I said this on Oilers Nation every day too. I don't think the Oilers get any of the top guys. I don't think I don't they either. go for them. No, I you don't go for them. They're young so guys. fucking expensive. Not young guys, sorry, depth guys. Yes. You just build that way. It's you like, you know, like Ken Hall, you, need, yeah, you exactly. know, Ken Holland's going to go kick tires on it. But he's not going to execute on it. No, it's just I, like last year the Oilers were tied to Ben Sherrod a lot, and he didn't come here. Dude, we've been tied to everybody. For, we've been tied to so many players for so long. Everybody loses their. Oh my god, we're going to do this. Like, what were we supposed to fucking move uh, Nuge for? Oh, okay, over oh, the okay. years, and then we, never, we never became fucking close to that. I, I let me throw this your way. Okay, let's go round table, rapid fire word association style <gasps> on a Friday. On a Friday, <laughs> we're getting wild. I wasn't really sure. this at all. Percentage um, chance the Oilers trade their first round pick at or before the deadline. Starting with me. Yeah. Uh, I'll say 60% chance. 75. 100. That they move the first round pick. He literally said, uh, this is the only year. But, now you're saying, but, Kate, but you said they're not going to go for a big name. So what are they going to do? Trade the first for Domi? Tyler, Tyler. A traded first round pick for Gaudreau. It appears. I think, I think the market's there to trade for like lower guys. If they want to go win the Stanley Cup. This should be like the 30th overall, 30th, 32nd. But when he's, pick, when right? you said big guys, do you mean like there's the, the three Kane, or four names Schiffer. out there that everyone's apparently yeah. trying to fucking trade O'Reilly. for? It appears yeah, like Tyler asked a question just to pick a fight. I'm just <laughs> saying. I think no, no, no. I was legitimately <laughs> here. So you think 100% he's moving it. Yeah. 75, 60, 30. So you're lower. And I'm, I'm reason, like 80%. My yeah. reason is this is like the only year he's truly come out and said like, yeah, we're going to move the first round pick. Like all the but other we, years, he's kind of been like, oh, if the deal's there, we'll move it. This feels like the only year he's truly said, like, I want to move that pick because I want to be better. Because that you this say that, team I is could, ready to go right now. Yeah, I, I so could also see it that. following down because even Stoffer has been talking on the broadcast about like, well, the Oilers are the only team over the last decade that has all their first round picks and all that kind of thing. So I could see it actually. Yeah. I'm yeah. still not moving off 30 though. <laughs> I actually don't 31. like, like, I think that a different GM would be better for us this trade deadline. What? I think that I think that we need somebody that's bold enough to make some money transactions happen. And I just don't see, think see Kelly money Holland transactions. I'm talking about like those three team trades where you got to move some stuff around to make things work. And we really don't have here. the, the, the option to do that. We don't have the assets for one and we don't have the, we have the cap all space. of our draft picks. All of them just sitting there waiting to be messed around with. And I know well, like I the players people, or the actual draft. No, picks? no, like just draft picks just to get that, just to get the, that magic sauce to start working around the salary cap. But instead we're up against it. And Ken seems like he's call it comfortable with that. I'm not. Yeah. I see sometimes, man, I don't, I don't want to just swing to swing. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah, you look at, yeah, no, you can't just swing to swing. I like a guy who's a little more tactical. Measured. Yeah. Uh, just a uh, minor correction, Dan. They're only missing. And it can't just be youth. They're only without no, their GM. Yeah. I know. But youth, system. we had a youthful coach once and that didn't turn Fourth? out so well. What deal was that one in? He's an ally Sorry, I'm getting, I'm, yeah, getting, <laughs> I'm trying to, what did you say? Sorry. We had a youthful coach a couple of years ago and that didn't work out. That's so fair. Well. Yeah, that's fair. So the, the youth movement. So you're saying fire Jay Woodcroft. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I just want to see Brad get a job. What kind sorry, of picks Dan, do they have? You forgot about the fourth round pick that we traded for, of course, long time oiler. Derek Broussard. Naturally. Sure. Yeah, Our, it. Penalty kill specialist. And that's yeah. do it again. <laughs> it. Uh-huh. So I guess that, that, that would be my one thing is that I want us out of this cap hell that we're sitting in, but I think Ken's fine with that. So but the, the cap hell will go when we start to get into fucking the cap going up again. 
Yeah, he's, of course. He's been actually screwed. I mean, a lot of GMs, but where we were exactly at the time in terms of having to be about to start to throw up more money. Um, yep. Yeah. He was one of the worst GMs out there for that. Like in the worst position. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, and like, and we, we talked about it with his transactions at the deadline right before the pandemic, but the pandemic really did throw, you know, a loop. Any team that was in that competition window at that time has been kind of thrown off the lease. And we were just like, Oilers, like right the on the cusp yeah. of like, now we got to throw some money yeah. around to big guys and Oh fuck. Now we can't. Yep. So yeah. We, but So that's just, so that would be my one thing though. And that's just my opinion is just that I don't think Kenny is the guy to do it for us this year. And that's okay. He is. We're going to win the cup this year. I think we win too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> As the eyes get real big. <laughs> well, might as well continue on down the rumor train since we're there uh, over at Sportsnet. Mark Spector wrote, well, he basically summarized a finish interview that yes, Pulley RV did. I uh, just kind of want to touch on it. To me, I just thought the article was, you know, factual in the sense that we all know. Yes. Only has one goal, but I just thought it was mean spirited. doesn't help anything for me. Um, but in terms of yes, Pulley RV being around Tyler, what do you think? I am generally not a fan of interviews being translated because I think you need to give more context than just running it through a translation. You oh, you mean he didn't tell you what any of the questions were? It just gave you the answers and you're like sn- snips of the answers. Yeah. Oh, welcome to the national Enquirer. So like, <laughs> fuck this guy, especially <laughs> the part about Pooley RV being like, I don't know if I'm a top player in the NHL, maybe in another league that seemed very aggressively spun by some people, not even just saying spec, but by some people as like a, hmm, he doesn't even, he might not even be in the NHL. He might not even want to be an NHL player. He needs to decide if he even wants to be an NHL player. And to me, I took that more as like an off the cuff comment. Like I'm not even an NHL player right now. Maybe in another league, I'm a goal scorer, but not here. And like that, it, to me, it was all getting spun very weird. And that's a dangerous game you play when you do these translated interviews. He answered questions without going into the cliches and now he's getting fucking shit on for it. All we want is oh, guys to come out in the NHL and actually speak from the heart and give actual answers and not just the cliches, not just things out of the fucking textbook. And he's now he's doing it. And now it's getting fucking he's getting dumped on for it. It's absolutely fucking stupid. I just challenge anybody and everybody that's upset by these clickbaity headlines to block the person that's doing it and just be done with them. Stop. Yeah. Move stop on. Following. Move on. Don't past bring up his exactly. name anymore. Yeah. Just fucking ignore and them. It, they go away. And because, because I, I agree with you, bag milk, your assessment of the article, I think was really astute saying that it's, it's factual. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's fine, but we keep doing this and we keep hearing it from the exact same seven guys, three guys, whoever you want to, however you want to break it down. Uh, I just really think that it's time to block these guys. It's time to send the message that we don't, we just don't want to he- have to hear it every second article. I think is a fair statement. And so that for me is, is like, it's just, you know, when you see that clickbaity headline, the, the buy son, I think was the part where I was buy just like, off. okay, let's uh, enough. And I, and I just continued to do this exact same thing. And he's stealing my bit with the Ty son Barry. There you go. Thank you. Block that Mark Spector. Disrespectful to me. Tommy Sapala, <laughs> who I think is the guy, Sapala, sorry, yeah. is the guy who wrote the article. Yep. <laughs> and I was just trying to find the story then. And it turns out he interviewed Poyavi's agent too. Yeah. And he said, so this is like a tweet from Tommy Sapala. He said, when the last contract was signed, certain commitments were made, Jesse was going to give it his all. And if it didn't work out, changes were going to be made. I don't think anyone can say Jesse hasn't given it his all. And then it says, I think it's time to think about the player and the human here. Then there was also another yeah. quote that Spectre translated from a finished tweet from this guy that said, well, you have his 3 million contract works as a stone in the shoe. Stones and shoes are uncomfortable if you've ever had a rock get in there. Yeah. Fucking stone. I always think a stone's huge. Like I don't even like a pebble in my damn shoe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing like that. Oh. I, I kind of made this point last week and I think we're just getting to another difficult crossroads in yes, RV's time as an oiler where, okay, are you going to qualify him at 3.3 million? Nope. Probably not. Okay. So do you want to lose him for free this summer? Nope. So what do you do? Trade him before the deadline, get rid of that 3 million bucks now and use it for a player who you think can really give you 
solid, meaningful bottom six minutes. The only thing with that, though, is I don't think you're getting another body back for him. You're getting a draft pick of some sort, and that draft pick's not going to help you for numerous years unless you turn around and spin yeah, that draft pick it. with some other draft yeah, pick yeah. to get somebody. Yeah. I don't see that really happening. So, like, um, I honestly, at this rate, you're not going to, if you get a, is a fifth round pick in your pocket right now worth more than having him play? Not to me to the rest of the year and through the playoffs. No, it's not. It okay. just isn't like he's, yes, he can't score. yes, he's, he's, he's obviously offensively challenged this year. He can't do anything right now. He can't buy a damn goal, but he's not creating a lot of defensive mistakes either. If he, if he wasn't like, if this player had, didn't have this history and he was just doing what he's doing, people wouldn't talk so much about him. What were you going to say? If you could get a third round pick for him, which I, th- I think you can, I think you get a third round for Pooley Darby. Okay. And then you then have two third round picks and $3 million in cap space. Cause you have your own and another one you got. What if you could get Max Domi and Luke Shen Domi at 50% retained Shen boom, 2.4 million. What's, what's better for this team? Domi and Shen or a third and pull Probably Domi and Shen right now. Why don't we being honest. trade him for Carlson? Eric Carlson? 50%. <laughs> Cause you also can't afford that. I, I think <laughs> Right now, I think you just key, you hold on. You have no reason to trade. You you're not being forced to trade him right nope. now. But by the deadline, you might be. I just think like I think you just keep keep, play, keep playing him right keep now. There's just for no now, yeah. point in fucking moving right now. Yeah, keep playing him. Woodcroft like, came out and had nothing but five great things yeah. to say about him today on on the interview with Stoff this morning or whatever is on his show. Um, I'm thinking about Jesse here. I'm too. Just move the kid. I feel for him. I feel for him. It's just like it's. To me right now, it's like the snowball's rolling downhill and nobody can stop it. Yeah, but moving him is not going to change anything in his head. You know like I, think, promise you, I promise you right now he's got a fucking mental block of just what he expects out of himself and totally. probably can't even see the fucking miniature check marks totally. he's doing out there right now. Humanizing the situation 100%. But we're also in Edmonton and this ain't going to stop until he's not here. See, and the big fucking fight about him in the, in, in Twitter, on Twitter and yeah. in the papers and shit isn't even about him. No, it's about, it's about the, anti and pro analytics. And no, it's about people's egos at this point. Yes. It, like literally they're only fighting just to make the other guy wrong. Well, the that's player I, involved is not even a part of this anymore. That's why I said the whole thing's mean spirited. It's like, yeah, the numbers are correct. One goal, whatever it is, assist, but like the tone of it is unnecessary. It is. Wildly. And then you have some of these guys out there writing and they're writing on, they forget that you're not writing about a hockey player. Or like a, this isn't table hockey and it is, they're pulled plastic figurines. Like these are human beings. And it blows my mind that you have somebody who's that old, who can't see some, a, a younger human being struggling and not feel a little bit of empathy or not even put it out there. Like he's, all he's doing is throwing fucking daggers all damn day. Well, and but it's not, it's just, well, sorry, Dan, it's yeah. not just that. It's like, there's other guys that aren't performing here. That's what and I was there's no, say. like, there's no even playing field. Yeah, it's, it's like, if you're going to call yes out, I think was what you're going to get yeah. at. Well then Kyler Yamamoto doesn't have a goal either. It's yes, it's got one. It is straight up. And this is convenient for me to say it. Cause I'm not a writer. I'm not a professional writer, but to me, it's lazy writing to just point at one dude. It would be like, if I came on this podcast every week and told Liam, Devin Shore is the reason we lose every hockey game, but that's just not, I mean, I sometimes it, it is, but that's not <laughs> always the reason. And it's not fair to Devin Shore. It's <laughs> asinine of me to point at the bottom six player and be like, that's the reason we're failing. It just, it, none it's of it. Cause he gets interactions out yes, of it. Of and that keeps him relevant. Of course. Good job. That's if why I, if people if we do what we're just I said to do, and I, don't even, to I don't it. even want to fucking block him. I know. Cause then you can like, Oh, yep. look at me blocks. I it plays, blah. it plays just into his fucking ego. Fucking ignore him. But just, okay. If you can't do it, if you can't away. do it, you can't, you have to just block him. You have to just do it. I think we're losing the plot a little bit here. Like, that's fair. I think we're all on the same no, page. Just, we're just yeah. rambling for the sake of it. Yeah, but it's just, it's, I, I think we Tyler, had, it's, we, we're worried about making a whole hour. Right? I think oh, as a fan base though, I think that this is, it's not unheard of that this venting is coming out of us. I think it's just, I think the fan base is tired of it. And I think yesterday was a, was a tipping point in that kind of transactional basis that he's created here. Didn't somebody post something out of Taylor, Hall, like a Taylor Hall quote that said, yeah, like the, yep. the commented on all the negativity out of the yep. media and whatnot and said it does affect things. Yep. It's not recent. And I was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Yeah. I think it was but it was Taylor Hall's uh, like to Bruce paraphrase. Jersey. It was just kind of like Edmonton's a really hard place to play because they're on you all the time. 
Yeah, they're they're only in Boston too. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of markets like yeah. that. It's yeah, like it reminds me of homey in Boston too. It, it reminds me of tie your skates right. Uh, Jack Edwards is going to give you a fucking medal. When we had George LaRock on, and he says, "If you think Edmonton's hard to play, and try playing in Montreal." Mm-hmm. So it's not just here, you know. But I want to talk about it's something Canadian more, markets. a little bit more fun. Thank. God. I want to talk about something a little bit more uplifting. I want to talk about a guy who's winning over the hearts of Edmontonians with every passing game. Of course, our boy Clem Costin. Wednesday against the Coyotes, he got a Gordy. Did he actually get the fight credit, or was that just a roughing? He did. He did. So we got a Gordy Howe hat trick on Wednesday. He drew blood on uh, Zach's nose there. Well, I don't understand what Zach Cassian was doing, fighting him with like 10 seconds left in the he game. He wants to like, hit somebody earlier in the game. That he, he was, was all over Clayton about. Keller, was, the shift before. Oh, that's what, yeah. He was out there standing up for somebody. You could tell. I just want to get everybody's take on Clem Costin because he's come in. He's got a couple of goals now. He's throwing his body around. He's got a little bit of skill. To me, I'm looking at, we're talking about before, can Ken Holland make trades? <laughs> Dmitry Samarikov for a guy who can contribute to the Oilers right now? That's a big trade. That's a big win. We're winning right now. That's trade. Well, and, the, and that, and it's not a name that was like out there for no. So America went away, and we it was like a high end dra- or prospect that we had, and we're like, oh great, we're trading for who? Oh, sweet goes right to the HL. Oh great, oh this is sweet, fantastic. Same thing with Costin too. I hadn't, I hadn't even really heard of the player before he before he showed up in Edmonton. And like you said, Beg Milk, he is a beacon for everything that Oilers fans should want. And he's having fun with the now. media. He's in the scrum yesterday holding the stick in like he's trying to answer questions or ask questions. And he's a lightning rod out there for other teams. Yeah. He, other teams are getting pissed off by clean cost. Yeah. And so that's, just we've just been missing that. We've been missing that with this team. And, you know, I find, I look like, uh, I feel like he gets the same reaction that Jesse does where, but the difference is Jesse just smiles at you. Clean glares back at you. He's got, and a, he's got a meanness to things him. to him. Yeah. So it's, he's it's not nice afraid to, to mess around and, Drop the gloves. Yeah. yeah. That's what I like about them is that the others don't have enough players that are ready to get in the mix. Like we've talked about this a couple of times and we just did on Oilers nation every day earlier about where Vasilevsky got hit a couple of weeks ago and the entire lightning line <laughs> jumped in the pile. We don't really have a lot of that. So we need more of that. And I think for clean cost and he's bringing a small element of that into the bottom six. And he I just know, really appreciate it. He just it. knows his role down there and he's playing to it. And unfortunately we don't have a lot of guys down there who do that. Liam, what's your thoughts on old Clem? Yeah, the real Clem Shady. Mm-hmm. The real deal. I mean, it's good. Like, we kind of spoke about it last week. Like, what are some of the leadership in the room like and stuff like that? And it's just good to see someone have a little bit of personality. Keep I'm it not light. guys don't, but like, I don't remember the last time we saw like a fun locker room picture. And I guess they haven't been in the locker room for a while, but it's good to see. I was just looking at, uh, how do you say his name again? Clean Sam- Costa. Samarukov. <laughs> Samarukov. He has five points in the AHL this season in 22 games. That's pretty good. He hasn't played an NHL game yet for St. Louis. Yeah, I, I think Clean Costa. I don't want to like go too crazy overreacting to like a big game against the Coyotes and all that, but I feel like every game he's played for the Oilers, he's been doing been good noticeable. things. Yeah. He's been noticeable. And I look at that style of player, former first round pick. He clearly has some skill. And I think that's the kind of bottom six guy that they need. You can win. You can win a Stanley cup with him in your bottom six. He can be like a reason why you win the Stanley cup is having guys like that in your bottom six. Well, and Rick, you mentioned it too. And I think it was a great point is that that's a guy that's not in the bottom six to try and be in the top six. He's there to be in the bottom six and he knows it. And I just want to make sure people don't try and like throw him into the top six. I do want to throw him in the top six. I think he could be really <laughs> I, good there. I already well, called him the answer. There's only one guy you're going to flip, you're gonna flip him out for right now. That's Yanmark. No, nah, no. Nah, you'd split up McDavid and Drysaddle. <laughs> okay, but who filters down? Who's still, they're both in the Yanmar, top Yeah, six. yeah, yeah. You play Yanmark out of the top six and you go you McDavid. put Nuge back up with McDavid? Sure, go McDavid, Nuge, Hyman, Drysaddle, Cost, and Yamamoto. I think you go. I just like having, co- if you're going to do that, I like have cost and just like taking Kane's spot. So if Kane's going to be playing with Nuge and Yam, that's where he plays. If yeah, Kane's sure. going to be playing with Leon and Yam, then that's where he plays. I just want to ke- keep as many lines the way we want them, the way they're supposed to be right now. Mm-hmm. One thing I want to give a uh, hat tip to the Oilers social media team because every time Clem Costin does anything, they do the do your thing 21, and I just appreciate That's it. That's funny. I like it. Uh, boys, we got a couple of questions here for Ask the Idiots for our friends at Soho. Soho YEG is the website. If you want pizza, you are in Edmonton and you want to be downtown, Soho is where you need to be. Mm. Let me tell you, bring an appetite though, because these pizzas are huge. I love it's it. One, one, meals. or just one big meal. I try it. Like I got the big one. 
It was it was two meals, half and half. I respect that. They're really good. Soho YEG.com. Go check them out. They've got live music. They've got a great venue. They've got, they are the home of all our events for the upcoming season. Go check them out at Soho YEG.com. Or more importantly, go get some za it's Friday night. Come on, pull your life together. Boys, we got, uh, what do I got here? Three questions for Ask the Idiots today. Liam, you are to my immediate right. So I'm going to start with you. Here we go. Should theme night jerseys, like the ones they wear in warm up, be worn for entire games, not just warm ups, like the hockey fights, cancer jersey, a military appreciation night, Indigenous Peoples Night. They could all be different style jerseys worn over the course of a long season. Just adds a little bit of spice to the year. Hmm. I want to say yes, but also I think these events come really close to each other. Like hockey fights, cancer is October, right? November. November, which is also military. Mm. as well so like you have two events in one and then we just had the indigenous night which was also november so maybe if they spread them out throughout the year i think it's a fun little thing to do and i like the way they do like the shirt off your back thing where people can like do the, the <laughs> raffle and win i think that's fun but yeah i guess yes Tyler? i like them as warm-up jerseys and keeping them as at that we have four jerseys for the normal games it's i i, I, I don't have any complaints about the way they handle things now rick yeah, I don't like to. Yeah, no, I like the way they do it right now. Like you watch a lot of minor teams, they kind of do that and they go obviously to the nth degree when it comes to swapping their jerseys in a bit. But uh, I like what we do, just the warm ups and go back to your reels for the game. Nation Dan. Uh, I think that something that people are kind of forgetting is that when it comes to jersey design, when it comes to creating a jersey, you have to factor in, you know, the visibility on the ice for the broadcasters, the television, all that kind of stuff. With these unique jerseys, they're able to just be free and wild with it. I don't think like maybe Tyler, you could speak to it because you're a broadcaster, uh, but I don't think you would have been able to see the numbers on the back of that jersey very well on a television or from the press belt. I think I think you make a good point in the sense that like to design a jersey that yeah, is going to get worn on the ice, so many different things have to go into it. To design a warm-up jersey, it's like, make it look cool. Check, yeah, yeah, boom. And Put it out there, auction it off, done. Yep, so no. I would only counter with those Tampa Bay Lightning reverse retros are hot piles sick. of garbage. They're sick. I'm just glad they fought last night, so we have it on hockeyfights.com forever. Oh, man. Uh, do you know what? Now that I've seen all the reverse, like, See most of them. I don't know if everyone's. The Flames it. just I, released theirs. I Did like them way more than I thought I was going to. The Lightning ones, just all of them oh. in general. And they all just the like Flames wore theirs like three times in a week. That's really? because they released it a month after everybody else did. Oh, I, know. I think because they're dumb. Yep. I mean, there's a team in one league in this province, CAJ. I don't know why I try to hide it. <laughs> 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 and they, their numbers, like you said it, they are black. Yeah. On a black jersey, and yeah. they have like red trim. That's right, you can just not see them at all. Like even their home broadcasters are pissed about it, and they're the ones who made it. So it's like you made your bed now lay in it, but it's quite funny. I wouldn't uh, just to wrap up the question. I wouldn't mind, like, um, but I, like you guys said, I hadn't really considered the broadcast. So there's stuff to put into it. But yeah. like, if you could design those in mind, I wouldn't mind. I, li- I like variety. I understand that these are all then auctioned off to raise some money for charity. So why not? I think it's fun. And I think that brings the fan experience into it too. I guess that's what I'm looking at. Cause they always released that video the other day of people winning tickets to, to get the third jerseys. Mm, yeah. I think that's cool. I think fans deserve a little bit of extra. I like the giveaway stuff. Yeah. I, th- I think I they still can do want that. the game to be in their regular Jersey. Question number two, for ask the idiots for our friends at Soho. Tyler, I'm starting with you. We got a hypothetical situation here. This is a shower thought from Tommy. <laughs> Let's like hypothetically we're showering. No, he's thinking of this in the shower. Yeah, he's, oh, he's okay. thinking of it in the shower. What if he's typing this in the shower? He might've been. No, Tommy, be careful. Careful. You don't want to get electrocuted. <laughs> Let's say the coyotes win Connor Bedard. <laughs> Would either the Leafs or the Coyotes entertain the idea of a Matthews for Bedard swap, knowing that there would obviously be other pieces needed to make a trade like this work? Given Matthews is from Arizona, do you think they would have any interest in such a flip? I bet you Arizona would love it because why would you not get the established superstar in there? I'm trying to think from a Leafs perspective. I don't think this is realistic at all. Let me We're preface talking this hypotheticals. Tommy, hypothetically, Tommy's in the shower, baby. Tommy's showering. That's good, Tommy. Wash, wash behind your knees. <laughs> Stop <laughs> thinking of Austin Matthews in the shower. The uh, case for the Leafs to do this would be, one, you get, an, you get extra assets from Arizona. This is not Bedard for Matthews straight up. Yeah, No course. way. Yeah. And if you're the Leafs, 
you get to head into an off season where you just found yourself like $11 million in cap space and you got some extra assets. So if you're Toronto and it's like Bedard, a future first and Chikrin is the deal. And it's like, okay, now even with Bedard's ELC being maxed out, you still got another 6 million bucks and you have Connor Bedard and you have Jacob Chikrin. And what could you take your first and this other newfound first, like whatever it is in 2024, what could you package that for? Or could you go back up the truck and sign like David Pasternak? Is Bedard and Pasternak better than just Matthews? <laughs> I like that this got Tyler as excited as it did. See, it's a hypothetical, but it got you moving. It's getting me armchair GM horny. That's fair. I, I think you're right on Tyler. I think that the Leafs would say yes to it. I think the coyotes would balk at it, but no, the Yotes would be all over it. I don't know. I feel like the, the Bedard is it's too perfect to happen in Arizona and to just have that trajectory for Tempe to be able to build into Bedard. And then they're going to get Matthews in two years anyways. Good point. Somebody did post a tweet. I don't know if it was Drager or whoever. Somebody said they do not think that Matthew signs there at the end of his contract. He said they, that there's, there's people in the upper office who aren't very happy with him because they believe that he thinks this team is not built to win. So if, I don't know. If, so if that's already so going to Arizona is probably going to help that. Yeah. So, so if I'm Arizona, I ain't, making that, I ain't making that trade then. Cause if I have well, like an Austin coming anyways, I'm going to keep both of them. Yeah, so if you're kidding. Toronto, yes, you make that trade. But if you're Arizona and you believe whatever that tweet was that I just said, um, then I think you're probably sitting back going, there's a chance, like worst case scenario, we get Bedard. Best case, we get Bedard and Matthews. Yeah, we're not making that deal. I, I don't think even hypothetically is real. Like how, how do you sell that as a Toronto fan base? Oh, we just traded our best player for somebody who is for not proving David himself in well, they he? could, He's never played a game. They yeah. could, they could, they could sell that. They could spin uh, a negative, sp- a negative spin on Matthews in oh, yeah. a second. Well, oh yeah, but Listen, Dodd's going to Vancouver anyway. So if Calgary matter. could sell you on Huberto and Uyghur fixing their franchise, they didn't sell Toronto me. can sell. Anyway. It would take it would take one negative story, probably a false one, being leaked about how when the Leafs lost in the tacos. first round this year, Matthews gave up before Game Seven. Matthews was moping, saying, "Here we go again," and they would. Throw some story out there. Oh, yeah. No, they would trash him in a fucking millisecond. Here's why I think that Toronto would do this deal. If I'm in the shower with Tommy, this is what I'd tell him. I'd say, Tommy, Tommy, just want you to know. (laughs) (laughs) But I think Toronto would do this because of what Dan said. Matthew's only got two years left on that contract. And if they do re-sign him, he's going to get a healthy lift. Healthy. And if they don't, they got nothing. Cause you're not going to trade him at the deadline when they're going towards the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I think the Leafs would do it. I think the Leafs would do it. God, that'd be fascinating. It would be a fascinating thing. Thank you for, you know what? If you want to send us hypotheticals for ass the idiots that are this engaging, if you want to get in the shower with Tommy, let us know. Yeah. Rick, you're up next. I, this one's funny. I like that. I'm starting with Rick on this one too. Where do you draw the line when it comes to contact with the other team's goalie? If they're out of the crease, I think they should be fair game. What's the, what did the boys think? Uh, yes and no. I don't think you should be going out of your way to make a hit out of the, <laughs> out of the, uh, out of the crease. But if he's out of the crease and he's in your path, I think that there's no real reason why try and avoid him. but you don't have to let fucking bull run. But if he's doing bidding and stuff, go. if he's, Oh yeah, just, do it, man. He's obviously the, he's the one initiating contact. Dan. So there's no way for me to corroborate this. You just have to believe me when I say it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I sent to the NHL. So just somebody at the NHL an email before the trapezoid. And I told them that we should get a basketball key. And that's the only place paint a basketball key on the ice. And that's the only place the goalies are safe. So in front of their net and then right behind their net everywhere else, it's fair game. I just think that goalies are going to operate in a different way because they understand the risks of going out into these areas. And, and as you mentioned, Rick, a guy like Bennington shows me that goalies believe that they have Very more few room. Goalies are doing than, Bennington does though. Of course, it's literally none other than Bennington. But, yeah. but he's created, they've created a situation where a Bennington can exist. And so you need to remove that Bennington situation. No, I, I don't you're think you're throwing. Guys, you're going to have too many guys going out there, like trying to go after the goaltender. Like, Game one of a playoff series. It'll be Lucic on Smith all over again. Andrew, Ladd. if, if Smith is stupid enough to go into the areas where he could be hit. 
But no, why would you like? Hey, for, so for as an Oiler fan, especially when Smith was on the team, you wouldn't want that because that dude was such a huge. Oh part no, of I want fucking, Smith to throw the reverse tre- check. Yeah, I just oh, imagine he, forever. The last thing I want is him trying to hit the guys too. You'll be down. <laughs> you'll be out. Uh, e- for that opportunity. Liam, I, should the goalies at any point be fair game? Uh, probably not. <laughs> There. Tyler. I sound a lot else Thanks, to explain. <laughs> <laughs> we must be under time constraints here, guys. Yeah. He's the one who works the time. He's the one who works the clock. Liam's been watching soccer the whole time. I think he's just hopefully answered the right question. Tyler? As Mike McKenna would say, um, the equipment goalies wear is not built to withstand body contact. It's for stopping the puck. It would be a mess. You can't do it. It'd be dumb. I say yes. And I think that even if they're in the crease, you should be allowed to kick them. <laughs> With your skate blade. Yep. In the kidney. 100%. Oh, Ron Hextall's, Ron Hextall's coming back to the ice. Mm-hmm. You fly in there with an elbow. Like Did a you Pavel Bure on Shane Churla elbow. Oh, that would do. That thing was vicious. <laughs> Did you guys see injured. Kemper the other day when nope. he got bumped into by Toffoli in the flames? Yeah, man, he just whacked him. So it was Hextall-esque. Oh, yeah, just yeah, whacked the shit out of him. to bring up that stick. clip. Yeah, oh, yeah I'll show you. Because those guys, they love to use that blocker too, right? That oh thing. man, did oh. they ever! Isn't that supposed to be a penalty? Yeah, I've it's taken one or two in the cage before. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So if you want to submit ask the idiots questions to the boys, they never see these questions before we record the podcast. So we get their first take on everything. I want to thank Soho for jumping in on this segment again. Soho Y E G. To be honest, oh. we never <laughs> see that was questions good. ever. <laughs> so you could just make these up. We don't this know. Is, I've never this is seen Billy the ask idiots. Ask. That is true. That Billy is true. Smith has done this before. It's Tyler showing us the clip. Oh, that is a good Ooh. hack by Kemper. That is the, the, uh, the overview is good too. That is a good hack by Kemper. Wap-pow. We should put that up on our socials. Yeah, Word association. <laughs> Liam said, wapow. Ouch. Uh, before we get on to hot and cold performers, I got to give us some love to Evander King. He made his way out to mask with cheese this past week. And I'm just going to read the post from the mask, which is Cree high school Evander Kane, Edmonton Oilers number 91 with support of the Oilers has offered to host a holiday shopping spree for a hundred kids, which was uh, he did this on December 8th. We want to thank Mr. Wolf for selecting some of the MCHS and MCJHS students to participate in this memorial, this memorable shopping spree. Each student was given uh, an Evander Kane t-shirt and were given $250 to shop themselves from Kane. A few of the MESC students bought $250 worth of groceries for their household. And when Evander Kane found out, gave them an additional $250 to go buy some stuff for themselves. So they are very thankful for the gesture from Evander Kane. And I just want to give him a shout out for it. That's a very, very nice gesture. That is awesome. There's been a lot of Oilers community stuff this past week. Yep. Cool. Connor McDavid and the Ben Stelter Fund. I was going to say Connor McDavid. That's obviously awesome. Um, Brett Kulak went out to Stony Plain and did some stuff there with minor hockey. You love to see it. It makes such a difference for those kids if you get to interact with an oiler, even for just the smallest minute. Mm-hmm. I've yeah, I've, I've told off. this. Sorry, go ahead. Dan. Oh, you know, you, you go ahead, man. I was just gonna say I've told this story a bunch of times on this podcast of Bill Ranford li- literally giving me thirty seconds of his time as like a six or seven year old, and I still remember it. I, whenever I meet Euler fans, especially abroad or just anywhere, I ask them, yeah, not that broad, uh, <laughs> abroad, out in the, uh, <laughs> out in the world. Uh, I always ask them, you know, what is the, what is the way you became an Oilers fan? And often it is just something as simple as a small interaction with a player that of, was of no consequence or little to no consequence to you at that time as a child but you just become a fan for life. And it's so awesome to even just be able to hear these stories. And so credit to the Oilers organization for sharing that stuff as well. Another one for me was uh, when I was little, we were playing at Bill Hunter arena. And when we walked in our dressing room, there was just a bag sitting there. So we're like, Oh, whatever. We just move it over by the door. Mac T walks in. And it was his kid's bag. And he's just like, thanks boys for taking care of it. And then he gave us like a two or three minute pregame speech and it got all the boys fired. Like imagine you're, I'm going to say we were 10 at the time. Having Mac T walk into the dressing room and give you a little pump up speech. I dig it. You guys won that game 14, nothing after that. Oh man. We didn't let in the goal for the rest of the (laughs) year. Former Crusader, Mac T's son. There you go. Sean. 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 Yeah. I can't remember his name. (laughs) <laughs> Bag milk, get your buttons ready. It's time for hot and cold performers for our friends at Canada Snowboard. Check out the FIS Big Air World Championship tomorrow at Commonwealth. Tyler, you going? 
I'm going. I have a spare <laughs> ticket. Tickets available at Ticketmaster. The best <laughs> snowboarders on earth are going to be here in the city. And if you haven't seen the jump at Commonwealth, it, it looks ridiculous. And we got a little bit lucky. It's going to be pretty nice tomorrow. Yeah. Make your way out to Commonwealth. Check it out. It's going to be great. Tickets still available at Ticketmaster. Uh, right in front of me, Nation Dan, you were up first, your Canada snowboard cold performer of the week. Oh, well, it's going to go out to some news, uh, from down South, uh, flames assistant GM, Chris snow was just mm. admitted into hospital, uh, overnight. And unfortunately it's not sounding very good. He's on a ventilator currently. So, uh, our hearts, I'm sure everybody agrees, go out collectively to, uh, the flames and, and Chris snow and his family, uh, snowy strong always, and hopefully you can pull through this one. So the news that Chris snow is on a ventilator is going to get my cold performer of the week. 100%. And you're going to understand I'm not going to give a button for that one. And if you don't know the Chris Snow story, it's very uplifting. He's been battling ALS for a long time. Yep. Was basically given like a year to live, yep. like a handful of years ago, yeah, the way he's fought four years through. ago now. The yeah. movement he started is great. So yeah, obviously Oilers S- Nation supports Snow. Snowy strong. Rick, your Canada Snowboard cold performer of the week. Well, I'm going to take it to a little, uh, little more fun area. And it goes to... Tyler for leaving my man bag of milk without a date mm. for the, uh, with, for the, the, the did I do that? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody in the city that's more excited for this event to happen than Tyler, because once it's over, he won't have to hear so much about standing. Yes. Then we'll go back to him trying to steal, uh, yeah, Christmas. shut down the beat cast and steal Christmas. There you go. Yeah. Uh, in case you missed it on real life, Tyler is celebrating St. Patrick's day tomorrow. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, <laughs> led astray, run amok and flat out deceived. <laughs> Shades of Tyler getting married all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, you're up next. Canada snowboard cold form of the week, which you will not be in attendance at tomorrow. I, I had a day. different one, but I'm just going to give it to the United Front you're all showing in this seemingly month long slanderous campaign against me. Like, what the heck? I can do no right. Absolutely no right. All of this, the whole company, even the people out there right now, who's sitting out there? Waz, Coom, they're not even a part of this. I see Everyone is getting my cold performer of the week. What the hell is going on? Yes. <laughs> Liam, you're up next. You're Canada Snowboard Cold Performer of the Week. Megan Markle. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to do this. I, I, just, started, well, I just started watching Suits there a little while ago, and I quite enjoy her, so I'm, cu- I'm uh, curious. I like her in Suits, too. I've just Black had enough. <laughs> I can't go on. I, I just, you know, you uh, I just can't. The queen just died. Now we're doing a damn documentary. Come on. You're in the final eight. The Philip, the F- Prince Philip died. And then the Oprah documentary comes out. Like read the room, Megan. <laughs> I'm upset. Wouldn't that be a Netflix thing? Yeah. It's a but they thing. should have the power to decide when this shit goes out. The crown postponed their, uh, season for a few months after the queen died. You can do this stuff. They have the technology. Well, they just needed to film an extra episode. now. <laughs> <laughs> New cold performer. Bag milk. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. My Canada snowboard cold performer of the week is Justin Beaver's outfit at the Leafs game the other night. What were you wearing? My guy. You're talking about the, gl- the glasses or the jacket? Both. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> he looks like a weird care bear on acid or something. And I don't understand that outfit. Like I get celebrities get all weird with their clothing choices, but like, my God, what was that one? You're as cold as ice. I can see him wearing it actually. And by the way, I'm, I'm pointing at Coom right now. Yeah, yeah. Was or Coom could pull it off. Coom came think. in here with a lot of fire today. He did, dude. I told him he looked like he's yeah. one of those entrance videos for uh, the NFL. Didn't say the NBA, and they're walking by and they're volumes. whatever. Coom's fit game's always strong. Yeah. Mm. All right, we're gonna flip it over to some bright sides. Liam, reversing the order. You're up first. Your Canada snowboard hot performer of the week. Zootopia. Oh, Why is that movie yesterday? I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you were a wild card. But it, yeah, it, was, yep. uh, it was fantastic. I just got to the part where they found out that whoa, spoilers! That predators are kind of turning a little evil. So I gotta, <laughs> gotta find out. Zootopia. Zootopia. This movie came out in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it like an animated kids really, movie? Yeah, yeah. really yeah. on the cutting yeah. edge here, it's, Liam. Uh, I'm an hour in. I hope to cut to rest on Monday. I love that you. It's a kids movie. How long could it be? It's an hour 49. Liam, have you oh, checked yeah. out that new flick, Gladiator, yet? 
Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of it. Is it animated? <laughs> I love that you're doing this in two parts as well. Feeling hot, hot, hot. <laughs> Feeling hot, hot, hot. Uh, Tyler, your Canada snowboard hot form of the week. Uh, my hot performer of the week is a new teammate we have here at Oilers Nation. I've long been a fan of his work. Bruce Kerlock is going to write his first post on Sunday. This dude is a must follow on Twitter. If you want to stay connected with everything happening on the Condors, he is wickedly smart and I'm excited for him to join us. It's getting hot in here. Uh, Rick, your Canada snowboard hot form of the week. Well, I don't know how anyone gives it to anybody besides Mr. Mustache. Stuart Skinner has been unbelievable for this team. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler was really hopeful you were talking about. It. Nah, thought you were giving me some love. All good. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, the mustache is still there. I mean, you got a little more on the chin now. Yeah. That's about it, though. Hey, no, Stu's been great, the video man. for that. Stu's, Stu's been great. I think you know a lot of guys said hey, Campbell should have played last game. I thought it should have been Stu. Stu looked great, and he's going to play again tonight, hopefully. And uh, yeah, he's just kind of running away at this number one spot right now. He's a hot guy. Yes, he is. Nation Dan, your Canada Snowboard Hot Form of the Week. Well, selfishly, I've been wanting to talk about this for now a month. Uh, on November the 8th, I got reached out to by a writer uh, who would like to have t- spoken to us at Hockey Fights. Uh, and that all culminated with uh, the post that started going out yesterday of a partnership between Hockey Fights and The Simpsons. Uh For myself, a guy who grew up not being able to watch that show because my parents were afraid of being told to eat my shorts. Mm. Uh, it's pretty cool that I can say that I've collaborated now with the Simpsons on something. Are you so, going to tell your parents to eat, their, eat your shorts this I, year? At Christmas? I, well, yeah, I will <laughs> probably <laughs> um, to be honest. So the Simpsons collab with hockey fights is going to get my hot performer of the week. When's the episode this Sunday? I, 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 I'm staying alive. <laughs> there, uh, BM. That, was, that was not the button I wanted. What <laughs> do you want to fire up the Bluetooth on uh, the roadcaster? Oh, oh, sorry. Wrong one. This wrong button. Yep. There we go. We are good. Nah, never mind. It won't work. Uh, (laughs) He tried to. Oh yeah. Good idea. Tried to just trying to give the clip. Literally just hold it right here. You sure you don't have it potted up? (laughs) Goon. There you go. We'll restart it. You would play the best position of all. The goon. Goon. Pretty word. What it mean? It's that sweet spot between a dog and an enforcer. Anyone who comes near the best players on the team, the goon turns their face into mustard. There you go. So that's the clip. Yeah, it'll be a, it, the episode is called Top Goon. It's going to be an episode featuring uh, Tiger Williams, Dave Schultz, and there's another old fighter in there that I'm forgetting the name of. Anyways, absolute blast. What You're are, not in it though. I am not in it. So I the am, original email when you, the, you, how you couldn't get yourself like a part of some sort. I, I got a bunch of scripts sent to me. I got a bunch of Simpson swag sent to the office, but no, I didn't get a part for us. So big guy is smoking hot. My guy over there is thirsty. No kidding. That was <laughs> incredible. <laughs> There was a lot of water. Is that on video? Yowie wowie. It is on video. video. I I wonder what the the sound sounds like there. Tyler, you'll note I'm not united in this front. (laughs) (laughs) No one wants kidney stones. (laughs) That is true. I did have kidney stones. They are not fun. Um, Just to wrap it up for Canada Snowboard, my hot performer of the week is, we just kind of touched on it a little bit, all the charity work that the Oilers are doing in the city including Vander Kane going out to Masco cheese, including the Ben Stelter foundation that just launched and Connor McDavid donating some money, uh, Brett Kulak going out to Stony Plain and interacting with the kids. So just a big shout out to all the weather's getting out in the community, making a difference. Can I give one last shout out? <laughs> During the button. <laughs> what? Uh-huh. Well, we haven't mentioned Zach Cassian twice this week. And oh. his, his return to this team. Oh, I thought the cold. tribute video was very cool. Like just talking like about community he work. The, he waved to our bench. Hey boys. See yeah. you guys over He's there. been the, I forgot he was here for so long. 412 <laughs> games. That's I couldn't believe it. But yeah, I always remember uh, people who, I can't remember who it was. Someone met him at the Harley Davidson thing. When he did like thing there and they were like, yeah, he was awesome. And he was just so happy to be in Edmonton. So I think just shout out to Zach Cassian, honorable hot and cold performer. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot because I'm flat. I ain't because you not. I like that one, Liam, because he did turn around his career, arguably here. He He was, he was on the way out. I think I don't even think it's out of Montreal. He definitely did. Yeah. Yeah. did A full 360. Shout out Cass. Well, that's not going to work for you. (laughs) 
boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. There you go. For our friends at Oodle Noodle DoorDash, Tourism Jasper, Soho, Canada Snowboard, this is Oilers Nation Radio, episode 655 million. Thank you for being here. Have a great weekend, everybody. Shout out, Tyler. Thanks for listening to Oilers Nation Radio, delivered by DoorDash. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.